residents of Meeple Town, this is Dean, and today I'm going to be looking at Raiders of the North Sea. This is the app version of the game. I'm going to be using my phone to show you some of the features, show you how the game plays out, and if you have seen our top 50 games, you'll know that Raiders, for the, Raiders of the North Sea is on that list. I really, really enjoy this game. Now, it's in my top 50 because of the, all the expansions included. Today, I'm just going to be looking at the base game on the app, but this should give you a good idea on how this plays out and um, show you if, uh, if this might be a game that you like. So I'm just going to jump into a game versus the AI. We'll just do a two-player game, and I'll do an explanation of how the game plays out and also just show you uh, some of the things uh, about the app that I think are, are good, maybe some things that I don't like, but just to give you an idea if this is something that might be for you. So first off, it's going to give you five cards, and you're going to choose two of those to get rid of. And so your starting hand will be a total of three cards. And then I'll kind of show you how the actions the AI is already taking their turns. So um, I'll, I'll explain on my turn what, uh, what we're looking at. So if you look at the top left-hand corner of the card, the red banner shows what that armor level is, and then the circle with a number and it shows you the cost of uh, the cost to put that card into play and so what I'm wanting to do right now is decide on two that I'm not going to use berserker is kind of expensive and there's two of them uh, but I think I will keep one of them I'll explain what those features are in just a minute I'll just get rid of those two and now I'm ready to start my turn so if you look at the bottom right hand of the screen you're gonna see a, the little worker jumping around and on your turn all you're going to do is place a worker take that action and remove a worker that's on the board and take the action of the location for that spot so I'll show you what I mean by that so the first thing I'm gonna do is I need to get some silver I already have two to start off with you'll see all the resources listed at the bottom and I also need to get cards into play especially I would like to be able to get that the jeweler in play because when I take the silversmith action that's going to give me an extra silver so in order not to necessarily waste that action I'm gonna jump here and take provisions um, or a provision <laughs> if you notice at the mill the place I just went it's if you place a black worker that's gonna give you one provision and the other color workers are gonna give you more than that and I'll explain how you get those other workers here in just a little while so the first thing that I did is uh, take one provision. Now I'll remove a worker from a location. In this case, I'll take one from the barracks. And then I'll take that action. So as I mentioned, I want to be able to get the jeweler out because uh, she'll give me an additional silver at the silversmith when I take that action. Now I mentioned the top left-hand corner of the cards. At the bottom of the card, you're going to see the that little head and that is if you go to the barracks or if a card says you know put another card into play then it will give you that bonus as you play out the game the little play button is if you take the action to play a card that's a one-time use then you can just play the card and take the action you don't have to to pay the cost to do that and so there's kind of some dual purpose card action going on here got the jeweler now in my crew and you max out your crew at five and you do want to kind of think about how that crew goes out and I'll explain that again in a little bit when I go on a raid but the jeweler doesn't offer any armor now when you go on raid you're gonna to want to have some armor so that's not very helpful but that's okay for right now we'll make do and so I'm gonna go down to silversmith like I said to be able to get some silver and I want to get four normally you would just get three with the with that black worker and then I will go to the I'll go to the gatehouse and the gatehouse is gonna give me two additional cards uh, I would have liked to have gone to the barracks but when you're removing a worker if there's not one there then you can't take that action so I'll just have to do that on my upcoming turn and since they did that that makes my choices a little bit easier so I'm going to go ahead and play in the barracks to get another crew member out there and see what we have we drew the mercenary which if the mercenary is killed in battle, they'll gain a victory point. And that warmonger is really helpful early on because harbors are the first ones that you're going to be raiding. And that's going to give me an additional victory point. So I'll just go ahead and hire that warmonger. Now I have two crew members with a total value of three 
armor. And let's see, the, and I'll go ahead and just take the provisions so that I can show you what a raid looks like in just a minute. So now I have two provisions, two crew members, and let's see, I'm going to go ahead and show you up here, hopefully, um, how to raid in the harbor. So now I have the warmonger that gives me an additional victory point. If you look up here, it's gonna it's kind of hard to I can't really point to it, but in the harbor, each of those has a number of provisions and the, a number of crew members. And the one on the far left says that I need two pro provisions and two crew members. At this point in the game, that's the only one that I can go to uh, because I don't have enough provisions or crew members to go somewhere else. So I will go to that bottom spot. And when you first uh, when you first do this, you are going to, I'm not sure why that didn't go there. There we go. <laughs> I must have dropped it in the wrong spot. When you first go there, it's, in in the harbor, it's, it's pretty simple because it's not adding any extra uh, points up. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean in just a minute. But all it does is says, say that you need two crew members and two provisions. And as a result, I got a gray worker out of the deal. And I mentioned there's different actions that you can take that either require different colored workers or they just give you a different bonus. It's not always better to use that worker. Like if you go to the silversmith, it's actually better to use the um, the original worker that you have because you get three as opposed to two with the gray worker. However, to get provisions at the mill, I'll get two provisions with a gray worker instead of one. And also if I go to the longhouse, I can now go there and if I do that I can trade in a yeah, let's just do that I've got a gray worker I put him up at the longhouse and when I do that I can take any of these actions one is I can trade in a stone or a cattle for three victory points and those come into effect at the end of the game or in this case I'm just gonna trade one cattle for two provisions so that I can more quickly build those up and be able to go out on raids. Now, I mentioned, uh, let me go ahead and take this action, and then I'll explain that, what I was going to say in just a minute. Let's see, I do need, I would love to get another character out, but I cannot right now, so I'll just go ahead and, I'll just take another provision, because I will need that. All right, now, let me go back up here for a second to show you some of these other actions. So if you can see the outpost once they take their turn, at the outpost it shows the cost in that little gray banner so that the one on the far right is going to be four provisions along with three workers and then you get to roll a die. And if you look at the red banner, that's going to show you the total value, the total armor value. And so if I had a total of eight or eight to 13, then I'll get two victory points if I rated there. Now, if I had 14 or more in my armor value, I would get four victory points. And there's going to be different locations that you can go to all the way up to the top. Now, the fortress, they're the best ones. They also cost gold to be able to, to, to raid those locations. And you also have to have a white worker to do that. But then the game in triggers when you only have one of those spaces left. And so let's see if there's anything else that I can do. I would like to get another... Yeah, I'll do that. I'll take another turn and uh, two more turns just to show you a couple different things. One is I'm going to go down here to the armory. And, oh, I can't do that because I have a black worker. Let's see. I will, I'll just go ahead and take a trip to the silversmith, get some more silver, and then I'll take the barracks so that I can have that gray worker. If it will let me pick up the gray worker. Let's see. Oh, that's not the right one. There we go. And then I'll be able to play another one. Uh, Berserker would be a really good one that if killed in the raid, you place a card back into your hand. That's really helpful. Uh, also, having a warmonger is really helpful, again, to, to raid again in the harbor. I'm just going to go ahead and take the Berserker, I believe. And then if I have enough, I'll show you how those other locations play out. And I will have enough. To, to be able to do that and unfortunately they took the spot that I was really wanting because there's some extra goodies there that would have helped me out but I'll take the other location and then show you another feature and then I'll just kind of wrap up and give you some of my final thoughts so I will 
head over there. Yeah, actually, there is another location I could take since I do have a gold. But I'm going to go to this outpost over here. And when I go to this outpost, you notice those two black skulls in that spot. And those aren't necessarily good. You saw, okay, sorry, I got the, the 10 total. That gave me the victory points there. When you pick up one of those Valkyrie tokens, that's going to mean that you have to kill one of your characters. So in this case, I'm going to kill the Berserker um, because it'll go back into my hand instead of being discarded. And then I don't need the Jeweler as much as I've you know gotten some gold and gotten that thing kind of going. So I send those to Valhalla. And now that seems like a really bad thing that you're losing crew, and it kind of is, but the benefit is as you move up the track, the Valhalla track, then you're actually going to be able to get victory points the farther you move up that track. Also, you saw me do the armor action earlier. The farther you move up on the armor action, the more uh, points you're going to get in the end of the game. And that's really the entire game. We would just keep playing this out until those fortress spots are mostly taken up, except all except one that triggers the end of the game. I think this is a really fun app. You know, there's some some quirky things. You know, having to scroll up and down on the map is, uh, you know, not ideal because you want to be able to see the whole board at one time, but it's not a big deal. I think that's kind of the best way that they could have done that uh, to for the app version of this game. Another thing is you've seen me, when I've tried to pick up some of those pieces, sometimes that's a little wonky. It doesn't work, and, um, you know, eventually it works. It's not like it's always stuck, but it doesn't always work exactly the way that I want. Overall, I think this is a really good app version of the game. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's, uh, it's a simple game to play. I knew how to play it, so I'm not sure about the tutorial and how that works out, but if you know the game, it's really easy to pick up. You just jump right into it, and if not, it's an easy enough game anyway, and I hope this kind of gives you an idea of how that plays if you wanted to watch a video to see how it plays out, but that's going to do it. That was Raiders of the North Sea, and this is Dean. Thanks for coming down to Meepletown. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to follow us on Twitter at Meepletown Games, and connect with us on the Meepletown Guild, guild number 3407, at boardgamegeek.com, and also subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel. And until next time, thanks for coming down to Meepletown.